This week I've been trying something a little bit more advanced in my three-dimensional design. So I visited this website and downloaded a software program called Hexagon 2.5. Now at the time of recording this post, it was free, usually $20. Um, added that to my cart and obviously installed it onto my computer. This is the workspace. It looks a bit more advanced than some of the other software that I've shown you in the past on my previous exploits. <clears throat> Getting around it is fairly simple. You press the Alt and left click to rotate the workspace and Alt and right click to move up, down, left and right. Now there are various areas that we're going to interact with on this software, but I'll just set up my viewpoint first of all. I'm going to go for the top view. Using my scroll wheel zooms it in and out. And I'm just repositioning things before I get started. Okay, so over on the right there's um, like a properties panel. That's where we'll interact with some of the dimensions. At the top we've got various tools for modeling with. Then we've got various ways of selecting areas of the shapes. And then also areas where we can actually change what we do with the workspace or with the thing we've got selected. So they'll become more evident as I go through this video. I'm going to start by um, going into my line tools and selecting a circle from the centre. I click to position and then I would either drag out and then click, but I'm going to type in an exact measurement over on the right. and then click enter and apply or apply and enter. Then I'm going to set the number of um, nodes that make up that circle. Apply and enter to confirm. And then I'm going to change the view. Now I think I'll go for a custom view and I'm just selecting my tool to be able to do that. Control and left click obviously to rotate and scroll wheel to zoom. Okay, so that's my circle. Now I'm going to change the dimensions of that circle actually because I want it a bit smaller to start with. Now I want to turn this circle into almost like a star shape. So with the circle selected and then choosing one of the options from the selection tools and increasing the iteration to two and apply. And what you see is that it's selected every other node. Now I'm choosing the resize tool or scale tool and I'm using the center um, little node to click and drag so that I can bring those points inwards. And if I set specific measurements, that's probably easier as well. Right, changing back to my normal selection tool. And the next job is to create the shape of the bar. So I'm using, I'm going to use a curve tool. I think what I'll do is I'll go for a view where I can see what that curve will turn out like. I click to position my first node and then click to position the second and as you see when I move the cursor along it now forms a curve along a spine. If you find you run out of space you can always alt and right click to move the workspace but I double click to finish that line as it was. Okay, so that's going to be the profile of my vase. I'm just going to change where it is positioned and the size. Because I want to set it flat onto the work plane and I don't want it to extend beyond the maximum print size of my 3D printer. Various ways of doing it, obviously you can type in specific dimensions or you can use the little drag arrows that you see me using there. Just bear in mind when you're resizing in this software that it actually resizes from the centre of the object. So if you're looking to position it, the overall size, divide that by two and then you can exactly position it. Okay, so now I've got my circle selected. 
I'm going to go to my surface modeling and then this option here extruding the line and I click on that line that I just drew and it gives me my shape which is amazing now selecting the object I just want to take a look around now at the moment this is a hollow object with an open top and an open bottom so I want to close that so I'm going into my vertex modeling I'm choosing close confirming this message that I change onto the appropriate mode and then click on that face, the bottom face. And that's now a closed shape with just the top of the vase being the opening. <clears throat> okay, next I need to thicken the wall because it's not, actually no, I'll twist it first. So I'm choosing my twist tool and I'm just typing in a random figure here until I get something I like. There we go, so that's done the twisting. Now next up I think I need to thicken that wall because it is literally just a thin face right now. So from my modeling tools I'm choosing thicken. And you can choose whether it thickens from the um, edge to the outside or edge to the inside and you can type in a specific value. Okay, so that's that done. Looking good so far. In fact, I could, probably could export this and print it as it is at the moment. Okay, click apply and enter to get back to my normal editing mode. Now I'd like to, hmm, what's next? I think we're going to go and head and round off um, some of these sharp edges. Now to do this I need my model selected, then I'm going into the wireframe mode and I'm choosing the select edges tool. Okay, so I click on that, click loop and then it will select all of the other edges that match that um, outer edge. Then I'm choosing chamfer from my vertex modeling, or chamfer, sorry, and just increasing the number of um, repetitions and also changing the size. Confirm by entering and then just going back to my slightly rendered mode so I can see how that's doing. Looks good. Need to do the same thing for the inside edge now. Again, select, loop, chamfer and change those dimensions to whatever you fancy or whatever I fancied. Apply and enter and then render, there we go, okay, so that's the top edge, nice. Now, am I happy with the staggered edges? Hmm. Maybe I should take a look at those. Okay. So for this, I'm going to select one of those vertical lines and then I'm going to click ring. And this is going to select all of those um, vertical edges as they go round. That's fine, that works. What I want to do is select all of the vertical lines though. So I click and then I shift and left click to select more than one thing at once. And I'll continue down. Okay, going into wireframe mode just to double check I've got the right thing selected. That's fine. Now if I click ring, it'll select all of the others that are relevant. Again, chamfer to round them off. I'll type in some specific dimensions here. Apply that. Hit enter. 
Okay, there we go. So it's split it down into lots more faces to give it a much smoother finish. Still looking good. I'm not going to bother with the inside because, to be honest, that's not going to be visible and it'll just end up increasing the file size and complexity of the shape. What I would like to do is do the horizontal um, ones of those lines now. Now, now that it's become obviously so many faces, it's going to be difficult to see those individual lines. But as long as you can get the one selected, it should be fine because when you've got that selected, you can hit loop and it'll select all of the others on that line. And again, I'll go into chamfer, change that thickness and range. Hit apply and enter to confirm. Okay, now I need to do the same for the rest of those lines. Okay, there we go. I think that's just about where I'd like it to be. Next job is I'll save it and switch over to my printer driver. So I saved it as an STL file and I'm now loading it into the software. Now the dimensions here are um, arranged so that it will fit within this um, printing space. However, I'm just going to reduce it in size in my printer driver a little bit. There we go. And then I'm going to slice that ready for printing. And there we go. We can see it's going to take around eight hours to print and obviously how many different things it's going to take. So I then sent it to the printer and that's the finished result. I'm well impressed with that. Here's another one that I did using a very similar technique. And then there's a third one as well, where I actually reduce the amount of the star shape. Many thanks for watching again this week. I do hope you enjoyed the video and that it gave you a little insight into the design process I go through for my 3D printing. Um, please don't forget to give the uh, video a thumbs up and also subscribe if you'd like to see more from me, John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thanks again. See you next time.